So welcome back. So let's just let me just show you here uh, how dynamic or how schemaless a Mongo database actually is. If I go to the bottom here of my database, we'll start by looking at how a user could look. He has an ID that looks like a number. He has a name that's a string. He has an age that's four three. But uh, let's try and see what I did here. Now name is all of a suddenly actually a number instead. The age is uh, digital, but the state is converted into an actual object. So let's see what the status was here. That was just a string. So notice how different it is. So let's compare two others. Okay, so here I said the name is still a number, but the age is actually an object. The Mongo doesn't care. It's schemaless. It's like the Wild West. You can put anything in anywhere. The Mongo doesn't validate it for you. There are some rules in here, but they are very limited. Compared to an SQL database, a relational database, if that was the relational database here, if I said name was actually a string, this would give me an exception. It would be validated as an exception. So you're not allowed to put in 22 in a string. It has to be a string. This is an integer or a number, right? But in the Mongo database, you're free to do whatever you want. So you can put anything in anywhere, and that's very powerful. But it's also not a good thing if you don't know how to control it, because then you end up with a mess of data. Right here, if I put in the name of numbers, and lower uh, or here I put in a name as a string, I'll start getting weird data back. But you might want to do that for some reason. You might put an age as an object somewhere, and age is just a single string somewhere or a number. It's up to you. The MongoDB doesn't stop you. But we do have in Mongoose, which I'm going to show you later, we have some schemas on top of the Mongo database. But remember, Mongo database is schema-less. You can do whatever you want in here. See you in the next lesson.